This is an electroencephalogram or EEG image of an infant's brain. And this is also an EEG image of an infant. The red marking inversely correlates with the infant's brain development, meaning higher the concentration of the red color, slower is the brain activity. What caused this? This experiment was conducted in Singapore. Researchers tracked babies with high and low exposure to screen time. For infants who were allowed less than one hour of daily screen time showed normal brain development, which is the first image that I showed. And for infants with daily screen time of more than three hours showed slow brain development, which was the second image. MRIs of children with heavy screen exposure reveals disturbing pattern. The frontal lobe, the part of the brain that controls planning and impulse regulation, shows gray matter shrinkage. The striatum, your reward center, shows visible damage. The insula, which processes emotions and empathy, shows signs of atrophy. And white matter, the brain's communication wiring, appears frayed and disorganized in preschoolers exceeding screen time guidelines. As a neurologist studying child development, I can say what we've been seeing now in the data. And this would have been unimaginable just a decade ago. 90% of babies under two are exposed to screens daily, often for two to three hours. Toddlers watching four hours of YouTube, 10 year olds gaming for six hours straight, and teenagers scrolling TikTok until 3 a.m. The age at which children regularly engage with media has dropped from four years old in 1970 to four months today. Can this be reversed? And if yes, how long will it take to undo the damage? When we look at brain scans of kids with problematic screen use, they look eerily similar to those of adults with cocaine or gambling addictions. Why? Because these apps and games flood the brain with dopamine, the same reward chemical hijacked by addictive drugs. Over time, the brain becomes dependent on high stimulation. That means ordinary activities like reading a book or doing homework start to feel impossibly boring. A Canadian study found that five-year-olds averaging just two hours of daily screen time were nearly eight times more likely to meet ADHD criteria than those with less than 30 minutes. A meta-analysis covering 81,000 children showed that those with more than two hours per day had a 50% higher risk of ADHD. We are not just observing attention disorders, we are manufacturing them. But screen time doesn't just hijack attention, it also robs children of something far more foundational, language and sleep. Between 18 months and 3 years, a child's brain experiences an explosion in language development. But language isn't learned through content, it's learned through human connections, eye contact, facial expressions and responsive back and forth. Here's the kicker, infants under 2 can't even understand video content, yet 90% of them are exposed to it daily. Studies show toddlers learn less from screens than from a human doing the same exact thing. Every hour in front of a screen is an hour not spent building essential communication circuitry. And then there's the sleep collapse. Blue light from devices suppresses melatonin, disrupting sleep onset. Fast-paced content fragments REM sleep cycles, preventing deep restorative sleep, the very kind needed to consolidate learning and support emotional regulation. Without sleep, the brain can't do its nighttime job, like storing memories, uh, pruning unnecessary connections, and reinforcing new learning. It's like deleting your hard drive every night. This isn't just a parenting problem, it's a public health crisis in slow motion. Some neurologists are warning of a coming wave of digital dementia cognitive decline, decades earlier than expected. Models predict that from 2060 to 2100, Alzheimer's rates may be four to six times higher than current projections. Not because of genetics, but because of what we are doing to developing brains today. But we don't need to wait 40 years to see the consequence. Right now, the NIH, the National Institute of Health, reports that children aged 8 to 10 with more than 2 hours of screen time daily score lower on language and thinking tests. And kids with more than 7 hours, their MRIs show actual cortical thinning visible, structural loss in areas related to decision making and emotional control. So where do we go from here? Here's the hopeful truth. The brain's neuroplasticity, its ability to recover and rebuild is still on our side. And the research proves it. When families reduce screen time and replace it with something like structured play, physical activity, reading aloud and face-to-face -face conversation, we see real measurable improvements, not over years, but sometimes in a matter of weeks. Children who meet both screen and movement guidelines perform significantly better on tests of memory, attention and emotional regulation. They're less anxious, they sleep better, their school performance improves, and they become calmer, more connected, and more curious. 
The brain doesn't need perfection, it just needs space to grow the way it was designed to. So what does that look like in practice? Number one, for babies under 18 months, just zero screen time, except for video calls with families maybe. For toddlers, 18 months to two years, only co-viewed educational content with a parent engaging in real time. Now for ages two to five years, maximum of one hour of high quality content per day, always with parental involvement. For school age kids, two hours max of recreational screen time per day, with screens off at least one hour before bed, and if possible, two hours before bed. And most importantly, it restores sleep, restore conversations, and restore movement. These are the foundations of brain development. They can't be replaced by even the most best educational app. So here's the question I want to leave you with. If you could see the brain scans, if you saw the shrinkage, the grey matter loss and the disorganized white matter, would you still hand your child that iPad tonight? The brain scans don't lie and your child's developing brain is waiting for your answer.